Okay, friends. This is machine embroidery. So, this could potentially get loud. I don't know why I always have... Oh, well, now I have two. Awesome. Two people. Um, so, this is machine embroidery. Today, I am working on towels, tea towels, kitchen towels. So, um, this is the design I'm working on. I have my phone on my stand, so I don't know if I can zoom in or not. Let's see. Oh, I can. So, this design is programmed is programmed. The program tells the machine how to stitch out the design. There are specific colors, um, but I pick my own colors. So, uh, looking at the next piece, I have two um, towels loaded in the frames. So then what I do is switch out between um, colors because I have a single needle machine. So I have to clip these jump stitches and then um, I save a little time by st stitching two towels at the same time. Not both in the same frame, but I have two different hoops loaded up. So then between the color switches, I uh, switch the hoops. And I will show you how I do that. So I just finished stitching this bright pink, this piece right here around the heart, the zigzag across. Oh, look, at, I almost accidentally started stitching the eyeball. See that? So I stopped it midstream. So I'm going to pick that out real quick. I can do that from the back. Oh, there, it already came out. That was easy. Okay, so I clipped the thread. I'm actually going to put this one back in because I already stitched the pink on the other one. And then I am going to find the color that I want to use for the next piece. Well, I grabbed a really pretty bright, bright, blue, oops, bright blue, but... Now that I see, I thought it was a different segment it was going to stitch, but it's going to be stitching the, I think it's the little squirrel feet. So I don't want bright blue squirrel feet, so I'm going to pick another color. And I have tons and tons of colors. So I can use just about anything, which I might just use black. So you can see right here, those two little tiny, so it ends up being a little bit of an effort for a little mini stitch. I should have my black back here because I'm always using it. Somewhere. Oh, there it is. It fell over. Okay, so I just grabbed the black. Thread it through the machine. Make sure the towel doesn't interfere with the thread. Make sure the towel isn't under the hoop. Because if it's under the hoop, then the machine will gladly just stitch right through. And then you've got a situation. Okay, so single needle is a little more effort. A little more time consuming, but that's what was in my budget. Okay, so, sorry, I'm trying to find my stool so I don't fall on the ground. Okay, so I've got the other thread loaded. Now I will put the foot down. It says green, I can go, but I need to hit my automatic threader and the thread is in the needle and away we go <clears throat> oh it's actually going to be the eyeballs I think so the machine is going to stitch that and then it will pop over to the other little squirrel see what did it stitch oh yeah the eyeball and the nose there we go isn't that 
you back over here. And then it's saying the next color is going to be a bluish color, and that looks like it will be the steam on the coffee. So we can use whichever color we like. Where's my little nippers? Oh, here they are. So I'll just go ahead and trim that. And then I have another frame with another towel. So I'll take this out and then I can show you the mechanism. Zoomed in here. Yes. Oh, sorry, I popped you out of the holder. Yes, it is a brother machine. So here is the mechanism that the hoop will connect to. This is a Brother PE800. And honestly, I love this machine. It never gives me any trouble. I even ran over a pin before, and I was able to um, kind of troubleshoot it myself and get it fixed. I just had to um, turn it off, um, realign the um, needle, so you can manually move the needle up and down with a knob that's on the right of the machine. So I went ahead and did that and then turned it off and on a couple times, put the foot up and down, and then did a couple test stitches and I managed to get it fixed. I would not recommend running over needles or, or pins. I ran over a pin because I float my designs, but I pin the towel to the stabilizer Okay, so this one, oh, I said the next step is going to be the steam for the coffee, but I need to stitch my nose and eyeball on this um, towel. So let's do that. I backed it up to stitch step number eight, and then here we go. So that just saves me a little bit of time. I'm not going to, if I'm stitching two or three of the same thing, then I try to just load up the frames or the hoops and then do the color um, on each one at the same time. So then I'm just switching out the color once at the end of the stitch. So next will be the steam on the coffee. So I'm just going to get these main threads clipped and then when I'm all done I'll go back and get any of these tiny stitches out. Okay, so raise the foot. That releases the tension on the thread. You can pull the thread out. And then the steam on the coffee. I think I will choose a light tan or brown. I've got so many colors because I bought a bunch off Amazon. Okay, I'm going to use kind of this gold cafe au lait kind of looking color. It looks like it's the steam on the coffee. Let's cross our fingers. So I'll stitch it on this towel. Then I will switch out the hoop, and then I'll stitch it on the next towel. A little bit tedious process, but. And then the design predicts the stitch time to be 26 minutes, but it takes a little longer because I'm switching out the thread. So even if I was only doing one towel, it would take longer than 26 minutes. This is a Brother PE800. Let me close this lid so you can see. And I have a thread stand at the back. So I don't use this thread spindle in here. I just keep my lid open. And then you can see, yes, it stitched the steam on the coffee. Thank you for the follow. And one like. Give myself a couple likes. Okay, now you can see 
it says stitch number 10. That will be the word coffee, but we are going to do the steam on the other towel. So I back up the stitch. I'm going to go ahead and clip this jump stitch. Oh goodness, I'm sorry, you can't even see that. I just clipped this stitch and then when I'm all done, I'll go back and get all these other extra stitches out. And then I'll show you, this is the back of the towel. And this is stabilizer. This holds the um, fabric and this is water soluble. So um, when the design is all done, I'll trim around the design. The stabilizer will stay there, but the stabilizer is water soluble. So whenever the customer washes the towel, it will dissolve. And it dissolves in cold water, so it's not an issue at all. Okay, so let me load this other hoop. And this mechanism right here, these there's little buttons. So those buttons pop into the holes right here. And it locks the frame in. When you want to release it, you push this button. So let me get this frame on here. And I want to make sure the towel is not stuck under the hoop. So hear the click. There we go. Double check that I've backed up my stitch for the steam on the coffee. <clears throat> and then the foot down, the light changes to green. The program will tell the machine where to stitch. And we'll stitch the steam on the coffee. Going to be the word coffee so I think what I'm going to do is pick a color that is the color of coffee get these threads trimmed take out this color I'm gonna pick more of a coffee with creamer color Maybe a darker tan, lighter brown. We've got so many to choose from. Okay, I'm going to go with this one. So we'll stitch it on this towel. Then we will change the hoop and stitch it on the other towel. So here I'm just threading the machine. When the foot is up, the tension discs are not activated, so the thread goes through very easily. Now I'm going to put the foot down on the side of the machine as an automatic threader. I press the button down and it puts the thread through the needle. And then this one, I'm just going to pull it a little bit more. And then we are ready to stitch the word coffee. You will see the green tracking where the stitching will be happening. Let me 
see that green X with a plus sign? So that's tracking where the stitching is. And then that is estimating this thread color will take four minutes and it's showing what it will stitch. And we are on step 10 of 12. Step 10 of 12, 14 minutes out of 26 minutes. And that 26 minutes is an estimate for the design to stitch out. It does take longer for the whole process because I'm switching out the thread colors. So the 26 minutes would be the actual needle time that the needle is working. Thank you for the follows. Feel free to tap the screen and give me some likes. Let's watch that number go up. So this is replicating cross stitch. If you were doing hand needlework, um, embroidery or cross stitch, it's making the little X's you can see in the design. Let me see if I can get that closer for you. And that is all programmed in the design. I purchase my designs off of um, websites. And those websites uh, specify that I can use the design to create my own product and then sell my product. You are typically never allowed to sell the design. Unfortunately, there are some people that sell the design, they buy it, and then they'll try to sell the design as their own, which that is really unfortunate. The main thing is when the designers make these uh, designs for others to use, they are intending for it to be small business, small production, not mass produced. So they do typically have a decent price. A lot of them offer um, nice sales throughout the year. So it isn't expensive to purchase the designs. But when I'm pricing my products, my finished products, I'm factoring in the cost of my materials, the cost of my time to create the design, on the towel. Some of the other things I make, I do sew things using my sewing machine and I do crochet. So probably when I get to this uh, section where it's showing it's an eight minute stitch out, I'll grab my crochet hook and work on that. And the next color I'm going to need. It says a uh, light pink and you can see that will be the wording here and the embellishment on the coffee cup. So I, I think I might actually pick another color besides pink. Um, well, maybe I will go with a light pink. I'll start searching that out now. Okay, so we're finished with this towel with the word coffee. So I'm going to switch out the frame and then stitch coffee on the other towel. Before I get that going, back up the step because I need to go back to the coffee step. Right. And again, make sure the towel is not under the hoop. Okay. 
and then I'm going to go over here, back it up one step. So I'm on step number 10. Okay, and I can verify it's coffee. And there we go. And I've got four minutes, so I'm going to go ahead and grab my crochet. So I'm going to be working on the crochet while the machine is stitching. Now, I think my machine does know if I leave the room because it will make funny noises and then I come running back in and something has inevitably gone wrong. So I tend to stay close by my machine while it's working. Usually not a problem because I usually have something else to do. This part of my workshop is actually set up in my kitchen. So I can work on other things while I am monitoring the embroidery machine. Thank you for the follows. Go ahead and tap the screen. Give me some likes there. It helps with the algorithm and TikTok recognizing that somebody is watching. Thank you for the follows. Thanks for coming by, checking it out. I'm also preparing for a local craft fair that will be happening October 15th. All the things I am creating while I'm on live are for sale. I do have an online shop. Feel free to check that out, link in bio. Now my machine is a single needle. It does not cut the jump stitches. So when the project is done, I will clip all the smaller jump stitches. Usually, like right now, I'll pause my machine and take care of the larger jump stitches just in case at some point the design overlaps the jump stitches and then it's just easier to clip that one big thread than to clip it after it's been stitched over. Thank you for the likes. Thank you for the follows. Done. I'll switch out the thread color. The next thread color that it's asking for is pink. So I have my pink ready here. Right. And I'm actually going to switch over to my camera real quick. Take a photo. So if that lags for a minute, you'll know why. And I'm back. 
I'm back. When the project is all done, I will clean up all the jump stitches. Okay, the next color is going to be pink. I'm going to take out this tan. This particular brand does not have a thread um, holder, so I have to wind the thread around and then I wrap it with this rubbery thing. So then that holds the loose end of the thread. This brand does have a holder in the bottom of the spool. You can see there's like a little crevice like thing. I think this might pull open. I'm not sure, but oh yeah, it does. It's just kind of hard. So see that? And this is Madeira. See that? Sorry, the lighting is not amazing. All right, so I'm going to load the pink in here. And then we will work on the next stitches. Okay. And then I also can double check my bobbin. All right, load the frame back in. I don't know why I took the other one out. I could have left it in there. So load the frame. And then this one is going to be stitching the word faster and some embellishments around the coffee cup. Okay, so let's make sure the towel is not under the frame. Right. Put down. Thread the needle, make sure the thread is all the way through. There we go, and press go. Thank you for the likes. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for the follows. Let me know if you have any questions. I'm always curious how people found my live. So if you want to share how you found my live, that would be great.
Thank you for the follow. If you're interested in any of the items you see me working on on TikTok, you can email me and I can let you know if they are available. Majority are available. Some are limited quantities. pause right there trim this little jump jump stitch right put down again so sometimes they have these little bits of thread and um, one time I was blowing off the little bits of thread and the towel went up under the needle. I was not excited when that happened. So while that's stitching, I'm working on my crochet. I'm crocheting slippers. I do offer slippers for sale as well and I have those posts in my TikTok also. And uh, there is a link in my bio. I do not have the slippers listed in my shop yet. But if you are interested in slippers, then I can um, you can email me and we can work that out. Sorry, I was distracted because I thought I saw on the pattern that that was supposed to stitch some stuff around the coffee cup. Oh no, it was just the word faster. Okay. Um, all right. And then I'm going to take this frame out and load the other frame and stitch faster on that frame. So it does save a little bit of time when I'm working on, um, when I want to have more than one of one, uh, design. It, saves a little time to have two frames loaded and then I can just change the frame out while that same thread color is on the machine. And then when I'm all done, I'll just go back through and trim up all these little tiny threads. Sometimes it just gets the best of me and I have to do it while it's in process. So these are really handy little curvy scissors. Very sharp. They're not very expensive. All right. Make sure the towel is not under the frame. Make sure I am on the stitch for the word faster. And okay. put down, light is green. I use will be blue. I have a nice bright blue that is ready. Thank you for the likes. Tap that screen. Tap, tap, tap. Thank you for the follows.
Let me know if you have any questions. Pause right here so I can trim this little jump stitch. My machine does not clip the jump stitches as it goes. Each feature that you're looking for on your machine adds a little bit more to the cost. So mine does not clip the jump stitches. Now I'm going to switch the thread and we'll be on the last stitch. The thread color will be blue. This is a Madeira thread, color number 1829. They do not have colored names on the spool. I think in some cases it might be too long, so they just have the numbers on there. So this will be the last stitch and it is uh, predicted to be, or to take eight minutes. So after this one, we'll be done. There we go. And I'm also working on my crochet. So I'm working on this slipper, which I think is almost done.
right, let's pause for a minute. Just take some time to clip these jump stitches. that so that I can trim this jump stitch. All right. That way it doesn't get stitched in under other threads. Yeah, it is pretty fun, Dragon Burrow. It, um, the machine does everything. I just select the colors. There are pre-programmed colors that are recommended, but I don't really follow that. So this one is programmed to make the phrase drink coffee, do stupid things faster. So I'm uh, stitching these out for uh, my craft fairs that are coming up in October and November. So on this project, I have two towels in um, hoops and I'm using the Brother PE800 uh, single needle embroidery machine to stitch that out. You can see the model number down here. So it does take a little more time because it is a single needle and I have to switch out all the colors manually, but if you had a multi-needle, then it would have a spot for multiple colors of thread. So you could load up the thread in the order that it's going to stitch, and then it would just go through and do it all. And those machines also trim the jump stitches, like that thread right there. And then I'm also working on my slippers over here. So while this is stitching, then I can work on something else. Nothing new going on. I, I had um, an interview and then I had a couple of calls and contact for my resume. But um, other than that, I just been getting ready for my markets that are coming up in October and November. What have you been up to? Yeah, this machine is super easy to use, uh, super user friendly. Um, of course, the startup with all the supplies that you need can be a pretty good hit, but the thread lasts a long time and the stabilizers last a long time. During COVID, the price of this machine went over a thousand dollars, but when I bought mine, it was on sale for about 500. And that was around November, 2019. Oh, okay. Yeah, we live in Southern California, so there's no getting ready for fall. It's like, okay, the yard is dead, then it rains, then the yard has weeds. And the yard is dead because it's so hot. And then um, we are always on a drought alert because we have no catchment basins. So whenever it rains, it just runs off into the gutter. There's no way for our city to store the water, so then they're always saying we're in a perpetual drought, which is, I think, a scam. Oh, yeah. 
So it's good to have something uh, to do in the house in case you get stuck inside. I mean, not that you don't go anywhere just because it snowed, but in case it's a heavier snowfall than you expect. Right now, we're just waiting for it to cool off. It's been 80 and 90 degrees, so. And then with the hurricanes, um, we get the humidity from the Gulf waters on the west off the Pacific Ocean and then from the Gulf, which seems kind of weird, but the, um, the Gulf Stream or... I don't know why the, the humidity travels up to us and then across Mexico. So, okay, let me load this other hoop and then that will be the last. And then I'll work on trimming all these jump stitches. So here's how it looks. See how it's like little X's like cross stitch or maybe even um, hand embroidery. Oh, it's 86. So it's 86 during the day, and then uh, the temp drops a lot during the night. Oh, thank you. So our temperatures have been dropping a little during the nighttime, but then sometimes it's still humid, which that's not really usual. It's just kind of been happening a lot this year so we end up leaving the house closed and having the AC because it's so humid at night you can't even sleep so the electric bill oh 55 okay so that's not really snow weather yet but like you said it can happen anytime good to be prepared one of my friends is in Florida and she has evacuated because she's in she lives in Tampa, so she's evacuated and conserving her phone battery, so hopefully she's still okay. All right, so now we're going to stitch this last bit, and we are all done, and I'm probably going to take a break. This will take about eight minutes for this stitch. And how about I move it so you can see what's going on. Yeah, she lives in a condo, and I think she's on the second or third floor. So um, hopefully the water doesn't get that high, but there's always a potential for debris to break the windows and have the water come in that way. But when I checked in with her yesterday morning, she was evacuated but I'm not sure if the area where she evacuated to is now in the path because the eye keeps changing.
Thank you for the likes. Feel free to tap the screen. Get some more likes up there on the meter board. this jump stitch. This is going to be a towel. Um, it is a, I think it's about 28 by 28, so it's a, actually a square. And it is just flat weave cotton. Actually, I think. While that one stitches, I'll take this one off the frame and then I can show you. Since I have two. I just take all the pins out around the border and then I turn it over and I trim the stabilizer and the excess stabilizer will wash away easily when the customer washes the towel. It's all water soluble. Sorry, I'm kind of working in my little cramped space, so I don't have a lot of room to spread out and show you. And then it has a little hanger on the side so it can hang up or just loop over the towel bar or the oven door or the refrigerator door. Pretty cool, huh? And then the back, it almost looks the same. It's just reverse image and then all the threads are there. Thank you. And then this one, we're almost done. It, get, it gives the stitch count there. 
So you can see the total is going to be 14,116. And as it goes along, it's just counting up by tens. And it will be done shortly. Yes, exactly. The stabilizer is completely water soluble. So even in the cold, cold water, it'll dissolve. It At first it just feels like a goopy, like um, glue, but then um, it uh, just washes out. So when it first gets wet, it feels goopy like glue, but then as it finishes the wash cycle, it will be completely dissolved and gone. All right, and then my machine just tells me all done. And then I can take that uh, hoop off and trim all the jump stitches and move on to my next project. So other types of um, projects you're working on, you would use a different kind of stabilizer, but there's so many resources out there that can, you know, if you're interested in getting um, a machine, there's so many resources that can tell you, um, you know, what kind of stabilizer to use and um, how thick or what, um, what is it, gauge weight. Because some of the stabilizers are lighter weight and some are heavier. So uh, you would use a heavier weight for something like a sweatshirt and then a lighter weight for something like a tea towel or flower sack towel or a um, t-shirt. On these type of towels, I just use a water-soluble stabilizer. And I think those are all the same weight. I just double it over a little bit to keep it tighter in the frame so that the towel doesn't shift or the stitching doesn't pucker. Some of the frames are um, easier to tighten up. These particular ones, they're not. And I don't want to use like a screwdriver to tighten them because I don't want to strip out the screw. So there's a tightening here. Let me lift the foot up. And then you can see where I double over the stabilizer so it's folded like right on the edge. Another thing I do sometimes if the fabric, well, I, I float it so it's, it's pinned onto the stabilizer, but you have to make sure all the pins are not in the way of the needle. But another thing I do sometimes is if I have a heavier uh, stitch count, then I put pins along the edge here so that the stabilizer doesn't slip. There's no pedal. It just goes on its own. As soon as you, which that was really weird for me to adjust to at first, I was like, how do I make it go? Because that was the first time I ever used a machine, an um, embroidery machine like this. And there's no pedal. You just, um, because everything is programmed and then um, the machine basically goes on its own according to the way it's programmed, you don't need a pedal. But let me show you, there are adjustments that you can make on the machine. So let's go backwards and I'm going to, get out of the design and then I'm going to look at um, it's it's showing you you can change the embroidery frame display you can change the sizing the biggest frame for this one is five by seven then the other option is the stitch speed <clears throat> sometimes people slow down their speed if they're working on something that's more delicate or um, a higher density of stitches. And then these other options I honestly have not used. This looks like a font and a number change. 
and then the inch I'm honestly not sure what that is but it does have other options on how you can um, use the display and uh, how it relates to the hoop one thing I've heard from many 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 people um, is don't change the tension rarely is the tension the issue so um, the designs you can do I rarely even use the designs that are in the machine you can purchase designs from many many different sources and they're usually not very expensive and a lot of times the designers have a lot of sales if you just google um, this particular machine uses a PES format some of the other machines do have other formats, but there is um, a way to convert them. So if you buy a bunch and then you have a different machine then it, or you change machines, you can convert them somehow. I don't have another machine, so I'm not sure how that works. Um, but I there is a USB port here, and I use a cord... And that is how you get the designs from your computer to the machine. Then let me show you these other options here. So it shows, you know, you can set all the different options. And then when does it need to be serviced? I've never had mine serviced. I probably should. Okay, so let's click OK. And then it goes back. So these are the built-in designs, but I mostly use the designs that I bought. The ones in the machine are perfectly fine, but I like to um, get an absurd amount of additional designs. So then um, the reason why I put them on these little USB thumb drives so that if anything wears out, it's going to be this cord. I don't take this in and out of the machine, and I learned that from an embroidery group because this can wear out. But if you just keep this cord in here, then the part that will wear out will be the cord, and that's easier to replace than to take your machine and have it serviced to have that port fixed. So, but this machine is very easy to use. If you've used a sewing machine, I think you can easily use this. If it's definitely in your thoughts, um, then, you know, research and save up. Um, there are machines out there that can convert to sew and do machine embroidery. But honestly, if you sew and you want to do machine embroidery, I think it's more adv advantageous to have a dedicated machine rather than switching between. Because if you have your workstation set up, you can set up your sewing machine and your embroidery machine. And while your embroidery machine is running, you can work on a sewing project. Um, also, look at the different price points for bigger hoops because the biggest hoop you can stitch on on here is five by seven. And it is a little bit limiting, um, but if that's what's in your budget, then you can definitely make it happen. Um, it does not come with a hat hoop or, you know, I, I think some people are able to make that work. It's just a little more challenging, but if you can afford to get a little bit bigger machine that works with a bigger, um, hoop, then, um, definitely do that and then look for extra bells and whistles like if it cuts the jump stitches which uh, my sister has a machine that cuts the jump stitches but when I was watching her using it I was helping her learn how to use it and I was saying what the heck is that thing doing because I wasn't used to it backing up cutting the jump stitches and then moving to the next stitch so when I was watching her machine that's what it was doing, but I didn't know that. She's like, it's cutting the jump stitches. Um, so now another thought is I've been watching um, Facebook Marketplace 
And sometimes there are some listed there that are reasonably priced. Just watch out for people that want to charge shipping and then, you know, do your research before to see what machine you're looking for, what machine is for sale, is it actually a good price, how many stitches is, are um, on it, because you can see the record <clears throat> here where it says how many stitches. See how mine has, um, what is that? 10, 10 million. And then the service count also says 10 million. So I think that when you have it serviced, it will go back to zero for the service count and then the total count. And um, I have been using my machine since probably May of 2020 that I really got more into it. I purchased it for myself as a gift around November 2019. Then when COVID came about, I started sewing masks. So I donated and um, sold masks and that helped me pay for my machine. Um, yeah, watch the Black Friday sales. Set up a um, notification on Amazon. I bought mine through Amazon and I was totally fine with it. I kept watching it. I think it went down to $550. And then like two days after I bought it, they were $570, $590, $600. So, you know, the typical economics of supply and demand. But hopefully, oh yeah. So you can set up an alert. And then also if you have any buy, sell, trade, um, Facebook pages in your area, you can put on there that you're looking for, you know, whatever machine you're looking for. Um, and there might be somebody that is having an estate sale or um, they thought they would get into it, but then they're not really into it. Um, or they had to move on after COVID. Now they're focused on something else and don't have the time to use it. Um, I always make the time because my kids are young adults. They still live at home. My husband is here with us as well. But, um, you know, you have to have a hobby. You have to have a little something on the side. So, um, yeah, just kind of make a post that you're searching for that in your buy, sell, trade group. Look on Facebook Marketplace. Check your pricing to see what is reasonable for a used machine because somebody could have one they're selling for dirt cheap, but it has like 90 million stitches. Yeah. I need the income from it right now. Definitely. I mean, I'm not really making a lot of sales, but I'm promoting my business. So that way, hopefully it does pick up and, um, yeah. So using my sewing machine, my crocheting, my machine embroidery, and then uh, doing the local shows and, and trying to do marketing to get the word out there. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I think so. I'm really excited to have some new items. Um, I was at this event last year and I did very well. Um, so I'm looking forward to it. Um, and, and it is very well advertised and well known. So people pretty much already plan to attend, um, year after year. And now that everything's pretty much opened up and there's not a question of, um, things being canceled, then people are, um, a little more, um, looking forward to events where they can attend in person and not have a fear of things um, shutting down or being canceled, you know, like they're, they're ready to make plans to attend. And then the other event I have in November is also, this will be the second year returning after COVID. And it's the same thing. It's at a local church, but it's a huge event very well advertised. The booth fee is very reasonable. The attendees help to advertise, um, you know, like on social media and stuff. 
So just getting the word out there and the people that have gone in past years, they look forward to it. And, you know, like I said, with everything opening up, people have less of a fear of things being canceled. So they go ahead and make their plans. And the next year I'm planning on going to um, Crochet Con in Omaha, which is being organized by Loops and B. So, I mean, it's going to be a small event, but for me, I'm just going to, oh, thank you so much, Dragon Burrow. I really appreciate that. I like supporting other people. And so it really means a lot when other people are supporting me. Um, yeah, so I want to go to uh, Crochet Con and uh, check that out. She's just organizing it now. It's her first time organizing an event like that. Um, so it should be fun. I'm going to have it like a little vacation, maybe take a road trip from Omaha to a couple other places. We'll see what else is around there. So, well, thanks for hanging out with me. I'm going to go ahead and um, get off the live right now. I'm going to go post some stuff to my YouTube channel. That is stuff that I streamed on Twitch. It's a lot easier to download and... Um, export over to YouTube. It's basically just a replay of what I did on Twitch. And then I'm going to add some more. Um, yeah, I need to get my breakfast. It's already 10 o'clock here. Um, it's uh, just a lot easier to upload the stuff to uh, YouTube from Twitch. And then I'm going to add some more content here showing what I worked on this morning. All right. Enjoy your lunch. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Yeah, it is. And and I just recently, I literally have not been using it that much. I would watch other people stream, but I did do some streaming with my uh, playing Animal Crossing and then doing my crafting and then exporting to YouTube is incredibly easy. So have to do that. Even though I'm not editing, I'm not doing anything fancy on uh, YouTube or anything, but I uh, like that it's that easy so that I actually can use another platform because I can't segment my day to be working on all the different platforms. So when they interface with each other that way, it's much, much nicer. All right, enjoy your lunch. You guys have a great day. Yeah, I do not like editing. I will not be editing. And I clearly state that when I am on Twitch. This is a straight export. There is no editing all right, cool. I just want to share the information. I'm not trying to become a YouTube phenom. Okay, enjoy your lunch. You guys have a great day. Thank you so much for coming in and thanks for your support.